guys, welcome back to another movie review. I'm back today and I'm going to be reviewing the British 1985 movie, My Beautiful Laundrette. This movie was directed by Stephen Frears and it marks the debut of the actor Daniel Day-Lewis. Now I'm a huge fan of Daniel Day-Lewis, I've been following his career for many years. I've seen a, a fair amount of his work, but this title specifically has eluded me for some time. I've known about this movie for ages, um, I've seen the trailer years back and marked it on my list to, to watch, but uh, yeah, up until now I'd never checked it out. So the story follows the lead character, Omar, played by Gordon Warnick. He's this young guy living in London trying to make something of himself with the help from Uncle Nasir, played by actor Seyfried Jeffrey, Omar gets the opportunity to become the caretaker and manager of Uncle Nasir's local laundrette. We see Omar run into an old childhood friend called Johnny, played by Daniel Day-Lewis. Unlike Omar, who's wearing these business suits and, you know, trying to get jobs, trying to make a name for himself. You have Johnny, this brash, cockney kind of guy hanging out of his friends in the streets. From the dialogue given, it's clear that these two were close friends, but over time drifted apart. I think the two having such different cultural backgrounds directed them on opposite paths. Omar has his family around him with his uncles and cousins, you know, a big family that owned many businesses, you know, they were working people. On the other hand, we never really find out too much about Johnny's family life. The absence of the family dynamic clearly made him a lot tougher and this is clearly visible when you compare him to Omar. So as the movie continues, the brash bravado from Johnny subsides and we do see a more mature and tender guy underneath. And subsequently, Omar and Johnny get heavily involved in the running of the laundrette, making it a success in the local community. Omar and Johnny rekindle their friendship, which later turns into a secret relationship. Omar's family are completely unaware of this and throughout the movie they are suggesting many times Omar should you know, hurry up and get married to a woman. And Omar's sexuality is never actually revealed. And so I guess this movie was pioneering for its time in showcasing homosexuality back in a more traditional time in cinema. But uh, having watched this movie it's clear to see that the Omar character definitely isn't openly prideful of his sexuality. If this movie was remade today, Omar, well, the, the Omar character would likely be openly gay. And so yeah, I, I found that interesting in terms of timelines and the acceptance in society and where it kind of matches up in today's world. You know, going into this film, I did expect the, or I assumed that the love story between Omar and Johnny was going to be the main focus of the film. You know, and as I said, I'd seen the trailer before, I'd seen a few clips online, but in retrospect, the love story between Omar and Johnny is really actually a subplot within the film, and it's never really the main focus. I was quite surprised to see that the main focus of the film revolves around the opening of the laundrette and Uncle Nasir's love life. A lot of characters from Omar's family are featured and this stuff personally I didn't really care for. You know in some ways it's good that the film fleshed out the Omar character. By the end of the film you definitely feel like you know these people. But yeah, you know, I'm not gonna lie, a lot of the scenes of the family and stuff, a lot of it felt like padding and it really did slow down the pace. 
Now, the best parts of this movie are all the Daniel Day-Lewis scenes. To some people, that might, of course, be obvious. You know, many people, including myself, you know, think or feel he is the greatest actor alive today. Daniel is the modern-day Laurence Olivier, if you ask me. In My Beautiful Laundrette, Daniel Day-Lewis showcases his acting skills and has vast amounts of screen presence. Because Daniel Day-Lewis is acting alongside actors that clearly are not on his level, it kind of only highlights his performance more. You know, I'm not taking anything away from the actors involved. There was no real bad performances here. There, there wasn't. But it's Daniel Day-Lewis, and this was his big first role. You can imagine, just trying to get in the mindset of Daniel Day-Lewis here. Okay, I've been working in the theatre, I've been building up. Okay, this is a great opportunity for me to be in this movie. I haven't got any credits to my name. I need to go in there, I need to smash this. And he does. And it's just a fantastic performance. And, you know, it's kind of like slapping myself. Why don't I watch this movie earlier? Like, I've seen a majority of his movies, but this one uh, was one that I'd, I'd never seen before. And, uh, yeah, it was great to finally check out. It's, it's, it's great stuff. And, you know, going back to the film... It is very much Omar's story, but for me, I was just way more interested in the Johnny character. You don't really know too much about him, but you want to know more. The character definitely has this mysterious vibe to him, leaving the audience curious. You know, and with the whole performance, Daniel Day Lewis gives you just enough, but leaves you wanting more. Yeah, I mean, yeah, thinking about it, I wouldn't mind seeing, you know, I would have preferred if it was just like a complete focus on the Johnny character and it would have made uh, for a better movie. Now, I could be wrong about this, but I do believe the Uncle Nasir character played by Safri Jeffrey actually had more screen time than Daniel Day-Lewis. I mean, it definitely felt that way anyway. And like I said, so leaving the audience wanting more and I get the impression the director may have not realised just how good Daniel Day-Lewis's performance was until maybe in post-production by then it's too late to go back and you know shoot more do reshoots and we need, oh, we need more Daniel Day-Lewis in this movie but it would have helped it really would have helped now, the movie was successful especially for a low budget British movie but as I alluded to just a moment ago if Daniel Day-Lewis had been the main character, would this movie have not even been even a bigger success? And yeah, no offence to the actor Gordon Warneck. He gave a solid performance. It's, a, it's an okay movie, but Daniel Day-Lewis is just like the shining light. If you take him out of this film, yeah, I mean, no offence to the actor uh, Gordon Warneck, but he can't. he's not captivating enough. And him acting along—I mean, him acting alongside Daniel D. Lewis in those scenes with you know Omar and Johnny—it worked. They bounced off each other and they had chemistry. But the scenes with Omar by himself, the scenes with Omar with his family and stuff—I was just like, "Where's Daniel D. Lewis?" Like, and that's that was my opinion. I was just like, "Wow, man! Like, we need more Daniel D. Lewis in this film." This is a cult movie, for sure. And My Beautiful Laundrette is mainly known for being one of Daniel Day-Lewis's early films. And yet, if, if he was not involved in this project, I kind of think this movie would have easily have been disregarded and forgotten. And I say that because without his performance, there's really nothing that interesting going on here. Upon review, it's only his scenes that are really worth your time rewatching. Everything else you can skip. I've seen a fair few Daniel Day Lewis movies, as I mentioned earlier. Upon reviewing My Beautiful Laundrette, I did take note of just how unique it was to see Daniel Day Lewis in a low budget movie. Usually, a lot of his films, you know, they're pretty expensive productions. So that was quite cool to, to see. A quick shout out to the composer Hans Zimmer, of course, most famous for doing the uh, Dark Knight trilogy with Christopher Nolan. I had no idea that he was actually involved in the soundtrack to My Beautiful Laundrette, and there were definitely a few 
moments, especially towards the end, that I thought some of the score was pretty decent. So that was definitely a highlight. So as I mentioned, this was Daniel Day-Lewis's big breakthrough role. Obviously, as I said, in his mindset, he had to go in and he knew that he had the talent, but he was like, okay, now, now this is my shot. I get to go in and I can you know, show everyone what I can do. This obviously spawned on multiple other film projects. Lewis started with My Beautiful Laundrette, then went on to A Room with a View with Helen the Bonham Carter. And, you know, and so forth and so on. So, you know, this guy's trajectory was just going up and up and up, as, as we all know, and, of course, subsequently would end up winning multiple Oscars, rightfully so. Looking at his filmography, though, this is the only time in which he has played a gay character. It you know, made me think, because obviously as he got more and more successful, as he won more and more Oscars, he became very specific and what kind of roles he wanted to do and I found it interesting that yeah he's never played another uh, homosexual character ever since and it did make me think that maybe him taking this role was quite strategic because okay I'm going to play a gay character this is going to be quite pioneering just in terms of you know the film you know being released being made in 1984 coming out in 1985 homosexuality in cinema obviously had been seen but you know not to the extent that we see it today Daniel Day-Lewis, you know, a fresh actor coming off the theatre scene, okay, I'm going to do this role, I need to smash it, and it's like, okay, well, this is a challenging role, but I want the challenges. But, okay, now that I've done it, yeah, I'm not going to do that again. Like, that one and done. And it made me think of, like, you know, possibly, like, but unlike Leonardo DiCaprio that was kind of getting into the business and was, you know, doing kind of small projects and kind of building his way up, Daniel Day-Lewis kind of went from a low-budget British movie straight to an ensemble film starring loads of well-known actors in A Room of a View and then went on to bigger productions after that. So Daniel Day-Lewis did not have the leverage that he needed in 1984. Subsequently, he took the role. I'm going to challenge myself. I'm going to, you know... Do, and he is a fantastic performance. I used the Johnny character to my advantage to get myself ahead of the game to get noticed and to raise my head above the parapet which it did and it raised his career and all that stuff and great performance, great acting, superb actor, all the plaudits, all the credit, I'm a huge fan. And then yeah, well I've done that and I don't even need to touch that again and yeah so in terms of that it was as me watching it, I was like, you know, geez. But um, in terms of what the character was doing, but in terms of what Daniel Day-Lewis was doing, just his performance alone and his, his accent, yeah, I just found that really interesting. And, and yeah, you know, clearly that's, in my opinion, that's what I see. If you know about the context in which what he was doing at that time, where he needed to go and where he wanted to go, he played the game. And after he did that, oh, okay, I don't need to... I don't need to get involved with that kind of stuff. And obviously that stuff is, you know, rife in Hollywood. And that's why, of course, another reason why uh, Daniel Dolo has actually left Hollywood and has actually retired. It's very unlikely that we'll see another movie from Daniel Day lewis and, that, and obviously what happened a couple of years ago with the whole Will Smith slap thing. The whole Hollywood system is just, you know, can we really blame Daniel Day lewis Like, Daniel Day lewis won three Oscars, you know. He's like, wow, this is like this is the type of actor and then we've got you know things with Will Smith and you know keep your wife's name out your you know it's like okay man like whatever bro it's like way to bring down the Oscars way to tarnish and spoil the Oscars and you know at the end of the day Daniel Day-Lewis you know once he saw what, what Will Smith did pretty sure Daniel Day-Lewis might have just you know I'm not going to chuck these Oscars away, but let's take them off the shelf because they're, they're kind of meaningless now. And that's what they are because the Oscars are meaningless and all this stuff. And yeah, so it's interesting to see his career and the roles that Daniel De Lewis has, has, has chosen and, and been able to choose. He's not an actor that was desperate for roles. Oh, I'll take anything. Yeah, I'll play, you know. No, 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 no. He did it one time, didn't want to do that again. And uh, hey, it was great for what it was. You know, he's like, okay, you want me to do that? Fine, I'll do that. But, yeah, it's acting after all. And, uh, yeah, he played the game. 
so yeah, apologies for a bit of ramble <laughs> there, but uh, in terms of dislikes for this film, I will have to say the whole family stuff going on, I, I mentioned it before, but it just slowed the pace down. I really wasn't that interested. And if I ever do rewatch this movie, I'll definitely have the skip button ready just so I can skip straight to the Daniel Day-Lewis scenes. It's not necessarily a bad film, but it's just boring, really, other than when Daniel Day-Lewis is on screen and he's, you know, interacting with the characters. You know, there's really nothing there. There's nothing that interesting or intriguing going on. But that said, other than that, there's no real bad, you know, like, oh, that's a bad performance or something I can really pick out you know I thought the story overall was very good definitely they fleshed out the characters uh, in terms of Omar and his family I would have liked just to have more backstory with the Johnny character but as I said doing little leaves the audience wanting more in terms of ratings I am going to rate my beautiful laundrette a 5 out of 10 to summarise, it's a decent film showcasing some great scenes with Daniel Day-Lewis and he is a standout performance, rightfully so. It's one of those things where you hear, oh, this was a standout performance from Daniel Day-Lewis. You then go watch the film and you, oh, I, yeah, I can completely agree or understand why, you know, his name got out there. He's, he's captivating and really, as I said, acting alongside lesser known actors it really just highlights and showcases his performance even more. If you're a Daniel Day Lewis fan and you have not seen this movie, definitely check it out. It's definitely worth a watch. But I do believe on YouTube someone clipped out all the Daniel Day Lewis scenes anyway, so just go watch that. But yeah, that's my review 5 out of 10 for My Beautiful Laundrette. If you guys have seen it, please uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. It's always good to read your comments. And yeah, I will be back very soon with more movie reviews. Take care. Like, subscribe.